We're live, kinda. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> right? I thought you'd be wearing your crown from this from this show. <laughs> I'm actually at my office today, and I haven't okay. been here in like six weeks. Oh gosh! But um, Drew is sick, so oh. we're sleeping in separate bedrooms, and I'm staying oh, out of the house, and yeah. so I'm here today. So my crown is at home. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, I should that's... have. I should have brought it like when Julia brought hers on. And yeah. Right. It's yep. Julia Mama. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah, right. That was so cute. She's so cute. <laughs> so you are one of the first 2024 uh, Olympic qualified athletes. How does that feel? Um. Oh God. There's like so many, so many mixed emotions, but relief is obviously a huge one. Uh, shock. <laughs> um yeah I just com completely unreal you yeah. know and I think that I think I told you guys Hurricane um I think I said last week Hurricane was the first show I ever watched as an amateur yes. in 2019 and I've never competed at the show before I won the overall at, a, at Tampa Pro which was another Tim Gardner show um so I was just like so excited just to do this show. I love the venue. It's in like a, you know, like a little theater and, and things like that. So it was a really great show day though. It was a great experience. All of us backstage, all the girls were so fantastic. It was just like such a wonderful day. Oh, that's awesome. Especially going into it. You, you know, you were talking about that whole week. You were just feeling really off and everything too. So before we get into all this, so we're on episode nine. <laughs> yeah. So guys, if you haven't done so already, subscribe, like, comment, all of the fun things that we need to do in order to get our algorithms working for us. Um, I know you've been, whenever you're at shows and stuff like that, people come up to you and talk to you about the podcast, which is awesome. We're getting tons of, you know, comments and DMs and all that kind of stuff. So that's really cool. So we appreciate all the support already. And, um, and we're going to keep this rolling. And, you know, like we mentioned last week, we will do one in person live at the Olympia this year too. So that'll be coming up, not this week, but next week, kind of like, yeah, like a week and a half from now. <laughs> so, yeah, 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 you know. <laughs> you know, no big deal. <laughs> no, no big deal. Um, but yeah, we're gonna plan on doing that right after the Olympia. And then, so that'll work out nicely because we can do that on Sunday. And then when I get home on Monday, I can upload it and everything and we'll be good to go. So um, that'll be perfect. So anyway, so now that we got that part out of the way, today's topic, we're going to be talking about all the Olympia hype and everything like that too. But first, I mean, like I said, let's go into, let's go into what happened this past week. Cause like you said, like last week you were saying going into it, you're hoping you could just get on stage. So what changed between, you know, Tuesday of last week and show day? Yeah. So I did check in with Jamie obviously on Wednesday and I wrote in my check-in, I said, hey, I know my stress is through the roof right now. I know I'm holding water. Um, it was getting better at that point. We talked on Tuesday. Monday was was the hardest day, of, you know, staff meetings and conversations with Drew and things like that. So I was improving on Wednesday. I was just kind of in my head as, you know, as an athlete, you know, mm -hmm. you just kind of get in your head, you know, you're not your best. And so I checked in with Jamie and she calls me right away. Um, and she was like, hey, listen, like, if you want to pull out of the show, I support you. Like, I, yeah. you know, however, she's like, you know, from from professional opinion as a coach, she's like, I think we got this. She's yeah. like, I think that we just continue to stick with the plan. You know, what's the worst that can happen? You know, you come in 10% off, 15% off, and they tell us that we need to tighten up for the Olympia. We right. already know that. Yep. She's like, I think we just, you know, stay the course. And listen, if come Friday, you are definitely not feeling it, we'll call the IFBB pro office and tell them that, you know, you're not feeling good. Yep. I was like, okay, you're right. You know, like I... It, that's why coaches have coaches, you know, yeah. and that's why it's really important to have that person that you can rely on, especially when you know that your mental clarity is not there. And I mm -hmm. know that I know that my mental clarity wasn't there last week. So I decided to stick to the plan and everything kept kept dialing in. Um, we didn't really have to, I want to say peak as much as we usually do just because we were being so cautious with how my body and how it was responding. However, this is definitely the tightest and fullest I have ever come in, mm -hmm. um, I think so. which is really exciting with, you mm -hmm. know, just how much internally was going on. Um, a little shocking to see that as well. Like, you know, right before we went on, just like, just like Tahoe, Jamie checked me in and she's like, this is it. Like, this yeah. is a really good look. And I was like, really? And she took a video and I was like, oh my, oh my God. Like I, yeah. I am really full and I am seeing really good lines and blah, blah, blah. So, um, 
yeah, you know, so th- we went up and um, we were, we're in the middle of, tr- of prejudging. And, you know, I had an idea, you know, there was uh, five Olympians in the show, including me. So four other Olympians, and I knew it was going to be stacked. And I just told myself that I wanted to nail my posing. Like I just mm-hmm. wanted to be able to control what I could control and, and have fun. Um, yeah. You know, there was nothing on the line at the show. There was nothing that I could have, you know, it, it couldn't have hurt me. So I just wanted to have fun. Yeah. And I think that that was a part of my, it was a part of my feedback. Everybody just, uh, the, the judges were saying, you just looked like you were having so much fun and the confidence and you were just captivating. And uh, one just said, we just couldn't stop looking at you, you yeah. know? And so that was, that was my goal. Um, and it worked and, you know, it's great momentum going into obviously this year's Olympia, but more than that, with everything that we have going on, just to know that we already have that 2024 qualification is unreal. Um, mm-hmm. I get to have some fun next year. I have a red suit that I want to pull out next yeah. year that I'm going to be able to, I could do it really whatever show that I, you know, want to do and have mm-hmm. fun with. Um, so it's just, it's, it's, it just kind of come in a more perfect time. Well, that's awesome. You know, and it's, it's funny because right after prejudging, I actually text Jamie because I ordered the, uh, the live stream, but it wasn't working for some reason. I got, kept getting an error message. So I couldn't oh, no. get the live to come up. I was like, Jamie, I was like, do you have anything you can send me so I can see what happened? <laughs> and so she sent me a little, little clip and I was like, oh, I have, J- I have Jordan in first. And the, the main reason why is because a i felt like your glutes were the most like 3d had the most pop to it from the back but also i felt like your waistline was the tightest um of all of everyone in that first call out um i thought you had the best balance and like you like i was telling you later that day you know i felt like it was the tightest you've come in and the fullest that you've come in you know so um you know one of the things that uh sometimes i see with you is just a little bit of flatness in the glutes or a little bit of flatness in the shoulders and that kind of thing and i didn't see any of that from you this past week so um ariana looked looked great but i felt like her waistline was just a little bit thick and i felt like she was a little bit too soft um, and that probably, probably her, I don't know what the feedback was, but that was my two cents from what I saw from the videos. So in my opinion, I thought you were the, the right, like right down the middle, um, of everything. Cause then there was that Tatiana girl I thought looked great, but she was, she was too conditioned in my opinion. So yep. it was like finding that happy medium. And I felt like you were the happy medium that day. Um, and it's funny that you said about the whole thing that the judges were just watching you because, um, I've told you about AJ who does the bodybuilding coverage for like yeah. bodybuilders and all that kind of stuff. Right. So he was, uh, he had a, bunch, the, a live strip. He had it on uh, little story clips on his stories on Instagram. And he's like, I don't know who this girl is. He was talking about you. He's like, I don't know who this girl is. He goes, but I like her. Yay. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, that's Jordan. Yay. <laughs> he's like, I don't know her name. That's me. Like, you know, again, coming from a guy who, follows bodybuilding because they're really paying attention to bikini as much, you know, and he actually comes to me quite a bit to get bikini like critiques and feedback and stuff. I was like, I was like, yeah, she won. She's the one that's going to win the show, <laughs> you know? Well, like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, there, there, there comes that piece, that intangible piece of this competition that people don't realize it's that, that wow factor, that it factor. And some days you just have it. And some days you don't, you know, and it's not, it's not anything you can control most of the time. Most of the time, it's just something about just, it's just your aura that day. It's just who you are that day, whatever it might be. Um, and you obviously had it for this past weekend. So did you get feedback? What did they say? What did they tell you other than, other than they, they couldn't stop staring at you? What else did they tell you? Literally, they just said, you know, to come in the same, which we know we have to come in a little bit tighter for the Olympia, but they just want to see the same thing. And, um, you know, the biggest thing for them with me is is just about keeping my mental space right so that i can bring the stage presence that i brought this weekend yeah for me when there's less pressure on the line i am able to relax a little bit more and i feel like have some fun i'm just such like a type a black and white very task driven person. So like and when you're in there's a sport no, where there, there is no rules to the sport. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So it's I like, know. if there's like a task yeah. on the line, I'm like focused, you know, but that doesn't translate well on stage, you right. know, because you got to be able to relax and have fun and loosen up a little bit. And yep. so I always do better when I feel like there's less pressure. So yep. I need to figure out how, when there is pressure, to kind of switch gears, right? And be able to relax and find that confidence and find that fun. Um, And that book is really helping that I know I keep bringing up. It is literally this life-changing book for me, that champion mindset book, because it talks about all this. Um, But I think that that's what is going to work best for me is just trying to find next weekend that stage presence, that confidence, that 
really there is nothing to lose for me. So I should be able to kind of tap into that and bring it, you know? Yeah, and, and that's, and I think that's common in the sport because I think the sport attracts people that are very type A driven, like you're very task oriented, very disciplined, very, all of that kind of stuff. But yet it is one of those sports where there is no defined rules. There's no defined scores. You know what I mean? It is very subjective when it comes to the actual scoring. Everything else about it is so regulated and so perfect and so like, met to the measure and all that kind of stuff to the calorie burn, all that kind of stuff. But then when you actually get on stage, it's like, Oh, whoever, whoever's the best that day. <laughs> right. And then we're in like a sport where we're like, you know, we're hard and we're in the gym and muscle and yeah. flex. And then when you're on stage, it's like dainty, pretty yeah. arch. <sighs> and it's like, that's why posing to me and most of the clients that I work with say posing is the hardest part yeah. because it's so unnatural to, right. to us. We like the journey of bodybuilding. We like being in the gym, the hard, the tough. We're, we're not meant to be dainty and, you know, posing and moving our hair and things like that. So mm -hmm. it is, it's just about finding that, that balance and yeah. everybody's, di everybody's different that way. So what are you going to So you mentioned coming in tighter for the Olympia? Um, are you going to basically just try to amp up the stage presence? Is that the, is that the goal over the next week and a half or? Yeah, I'm just going to continue to like practice my walk um, okay. and comparisons and holds, Okay, you know, because that's that's where we know that most of the um, the judging is right. is very, you know, particular and, and things like that and where a lot of flaws are shown. So mm -hmm. that's where I need to control my control controllable. So I'm going to be just really focusing on keeping stress low this week. Mm -hmm. I still have a good, uh, some inflammation that I can definitely push out. So, and I'm getting better and better. I'm getting really good sleep over the last couple weeks or a couple, couple nights. So just trying to cruise right now. Yeah. Um, I do have a couple clients competing in clash this weekend. So okay. clashes in Orlando this weekend, right before mm -hmm. the Olympia. So I will be up and up there uh, supporting them and, and doing that. So just a little bit of stress this weekend. And then I am going to come home. I considered staying in Orlando for the entire yeah. week, but I think coming home for a couple nights, being in my own gym, my own space, and then going up to the craziness around Wednesday, Thursday is going to work better for me. Yeah. Um, so that's Which it right now. A couple hours away anyway. So it's not like a big deal, right? Yeah, literally. I'm only, I mean, before traffic, like I'm literally only an hour and 20 minutes from Orlando. So yeah. I can get up there really anytime. Yeah. I would do the same thing just because you have the, you have all the comforts and regularity of being at home. That said though, with Drew being sick, that's kind of a not comforting thing. <laughs> not at all. And I, I'm, uh, we got home on Sunday and he was like, I think I'm fighting something. And he had what I had at the beginning of last week. Cause I remember I was sick on, yeah. on Sunday, Monday too, last week. Yeah. He has the exact same thing. So I called the IV guy. He came right, right there Sunday afternoon, yeah. gave us both IVs. Drew is feeling better today. So I'm glad I did that. We're going to do another IV bag on Sunday when we get back from the clash. But yeah, with him being sick and like, I tried to sleep in bed with him on Monday and he was like coughing and stuff. And I was like, I can't sleep and you're you sick know. and I'm getting stressed. You just got to do what you got to do, man. I'm telling yes. you, it makes such a big difference. I mean, it just, it just, it is what it is. You know, my, it is what it is. I yeah. say to my dog every day because, because Elvis sleeps in the bed now because I'm in the, in the guest room and everything. I was like, Elvis, I was like, you got one month left. You got one month left. I you got to like, move over, better, buddy. I was like, you better enjoy it because I'm yeah. coming back. <laughs> My dogs were so confused last night. Like my big guy, Oliver was like, mom, like, like he's going back and forth between the guest room and my yeah. room. And he's like, where do I sleep? Oh, like, gosh. no, no, no. Elvis is all about it. Like he, now he's like, oh, I get the big bed. And he runs right. in. <laughs> he's like, I'm good. Honestly, he's one of the biggest reasons why I have a hard time sleeping in the, in the main room because he'll start out like sleeping on the, on the foot of the bed with us and he'll get up and he'll go, he's got a bed on the floor. So he'll get up and go sleep on the bed. But in the middle of the night, he'll, he'll get up and he'll walk around and we have the, we have the vinyl floor. So his little nails like click, 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 click all the floor and wake me up. My little girl does that penny. It's like, Click, 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 click. I'm like, what are you doing? I know. So well, Dolly, like, you know, Dolly's our little one, but she's got, she's got a little, we have a little playpen for her. She stays mm. in there. So that's where she goes. She, that's her little, that's her home. That's where she, her little princess home. So <laughs> that's where she goes at night. She doesn't move. Princess she's good. Home. Yeah. 
She's got, we, we talk about how she's in real estate because she's got, she's got houses all over our house. Like she's, got, <laughs> she's, got a, she's got a house in the bedroom. She's got a house in the living room. Like she's got a little home. She's got a bed in my, in my husband's office. Like she's literally got like three homes inside of our home. So Every she's... time that I leave the house in the morning, I'm like, okay, mommy's going to make money so that you can just sit here yes. and sleep all day and right. eat. Yep, exactly. I'm like, I always I tell them that. You know, you don't know where you're getting all this money for all this real estate right now, but I know <laughs> we work so our dogs can have better lives. For real, it's so true. That's I, I'm, I'm being dead serious. One of the reasons why we bought our house is because we have a plot of land so that the dogs can be on land. That is one of the reasons why we bought this house. I need to invite myself over to your house with my dogs so that they can go frolic. <laughs> yeah, they can go run in the, we have a creek down back. They can have fun, you know, all Oh, my stuff. God. Yeah. They, oh, my gosh. We, we got to do a trip. That would be fun. We even have, like, we we call them our, our fox friends. We have two foxes that live in our neighborhood. And they cool. run around all the So I, I don't, we've never been close enough to know, like, if they're friendly or not but right. they have to be relative they're relatively domesticated because they're around people all the time so like, they're not nuisance which is no, good. no okay no. they just play and they have a good time like they're they're relatively big though they're about they're probably about half the size of elvis so they're they're pretty big oh wow um they they were babies last year and like they we would see them all the time because they would be on the corner of our street we live in a cul-de-sac so they'd be on the corner of the street as we're going down the cul-de-sac and now now that they're grown they're not out in the street anymore but yeah <laughs> People we do. see it. Yeah, we see him once in a while. And I think so. Last night I was outside on the back porch smoking my cigar, and I'm hearing something run around in our backyard. And I'm assuming it was them, you know, just just playing or whatever they were doing back there at midnight. That's so cool, <laughs> though, with like how wooded your area is. You yeah. probably have like a lot of good wildlife. Oh, we do. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. We do. I love it too because like it's just. I always say like when you go onto our back porch, it's almost like you're in a different world because. We do have neighbors, but there's tree covering, so you can't yeah. see them unless you are looking for them, kind of thing. So it really does feel like you're in a completely different, completely different world. You can just breathe. It's like fresh air. It's like I don't know, just it, it really is. Yeah, it's like going into a completely different world. It really is. Wow. And, and, you know, we live outside of DC, so it's really densely populated here. Um, it's really hard to find land, so we got lucky. Um, yeah, where we actually bought our house something like that too so you know it just <laughs> every day i'm like I, I just feel blessed that i have this place because it used to be we lived in a townhouse with you know people on either side and the, the cars zooming up and down the street like we couldn't oh gosh dogs. completely different than what completely you live in now yeah, yeah. And we couldn't we couldn't just let the dogs out because they could go run into the street you know what i mean now if they go run into the street there's a there's a car that comes by every three hours exactly. <laughs> you know what i mean that's so not a big exactly deal. And they got a long way to run before they're gonna get to the street too so and in our professions, having like that quiet and that yes. solstice is so nice because really most weekends it's like blah, 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 blah. And then when during, you know, Monday through Wednesday, it's just nice to have peace yes. and quiet and having yes. that one spot that, you know, like there's not that hustle and bustle. So I feel yeah, that in our tremendously. Neighborhood is just it's just beautiful. The people here are super nice. And like, I, I try to do my cardio outside whenever I get a chance because it's just so nice. Like, it's just, I, you know, that it's hilly. So and keep my intensity up by running up and down the hills and all that kind of stuff. And it's just like it people take care of their homes. It's just like a really beautiful area. You know what I mean? So it's just like it's 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 like a stress release almost. Absolutely. The only time, the only times I don't do cardio outside is um when it's raining and if like my hips and my legs and my knees and stuff are hurting too much because I just can't <laughs> run on the on the concrete all the time. You know? The hills but, at that point are too much. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, no, I gotta get on the elliptical today. <laughs> Well, so, speaking of cardio, let's talk about your prep. You're only a couple yeah. weeks out, too. So, yeah, don't say couple. No, three, I'm like right? three and a half. Three and a half. Sorry. <laughs> I know. I'm like, Sorry. We're, we're just under a month. Don't say that. No. Um, yeah, so things are going good. Um, I say that with a caveat if I just got my period on Saturday. So, oh. um, yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. So, as I, as I was texting you, I'm like, so this means it's going to happen literally like right Before. while I'm in Japan. So yeah. um, I've been pretty regular, uh, meaning like within that 30 day range. So right on that 30 days is basically where it's hitting every time, which would put me at Monday after Hawaii. So <laughs> I'm like, so, wow. uh, you know, this is so the way that my, the way that my body works typically, and this could be different because I'll be leaner. So we don't know, but I just, you know, I take notes so that I know exactly how, how it's going to go. But typically how my body works, my body starts pulling water a day before I get my period. Okay. So if I do get it on Monday, it's going to start pulling water on Sunday. 
when you say pull water, do you mean that it starts dropping water? It starts pulling in water. Pulling in, holding. Okay. Yeah. So I start getting bloated. Um, I start to feel it in my stomach, you know, those kinds of things. Like this month, I was like, I even said that in my check-in. I remember writing it in my check-in. I was like, I can feel that it's starting to come on. This was on Thursday. So it's a very touchy like area, right? The Thursday, I got my period on Saturday. So on Thursday is when I started to feel it. Okay. Um, my weight didn't go up, but I felt it, you know? Interesting. Okay. Um, my weight started going up on Friday. And then when it stayed the same on from Friday to Saturday, it stayed the same. It went up like a, like a half a pound. Saturday, something in the back of my head just told me, just keep going, get your, get your workout done, get your cardio done, just get it all, get it all done. So I did. And immediately, immediately when I came inside from, from doing my cardio, I got my period immediately. Like, so you didn't even work. wake up with your period. It happened no. later on. No, it, it, you know, for me, it always happens later on. It never, it never happens in the morning. Okay. It always happens later on. Okay. So, um, yeah, it's usually afternoon is when it hits. So, um, so yeah, so that was four o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. Because so the Alabama game was on. That's why I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I, walked in, I know I walk inside, I went to go pee and I was like, Oh, there it is. All right, cool. Awesome. There she is. So <laughs> I was like, fan fucking tastic. Cause, um, like I said, that's going to put me at Monday afternoon, um, after Hawaii, which I can mitigate if I, if I'm holding any water on Saturday with diuretics and things like that, you know, if I need to. So from, for Hawaii and then I will get through it. And usually after I get through the first three days, then my weight starts to drop. Like my weight dropped today and it actually dropped below where it was on Thursday for my yep. check-ins. Correct. So, um, I still feel a little, feel a little bit bloated. Um, but my weight is lower by a half a pound than what it was even on Thursday before. You're just going to so, keep getting tighter. Yeah. So, and I typically the week after my period is when I am my tightest. So <laughs> I'm like, part of me is in the back of my head. I'm like, uh, cause I, you know, I've done this before where I've been able to manipulate my period and when it starts and how, how fast it goes and stuff through like vitamin C and things like that. There's like ways of doing that. I've done it before. It actually works. So part of me is like, oh, I wonder if I can do that. But all that's going to do is it's going to make my period start faster, which isn't going to help me. It's going to make it bad for Hawaii because it's only going to make it start faster by a couple of days, which will make it bad for Hawaii. So I'm like, if I just leave it alone, then hopefully we'll be okay, right? What a tough call. I, I I hear you though. Yeah. I'm like, how do I do that? How for two two years in a row I plan my shows and they hit around this. But you like, you never going? lose a period, right? No. So this no, is I, this is normal for you. Yes. It's just the fact that the shows you have planned are back to back, and then mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So the only time that I ever <laughs> lost period was years ago. Um, and it was cause I was like uber, like skinny lean and it was bad, but that was one time and it was one cycle and that was it. And, um, since then, like if I have any kind of irregularity, it'll be like off by a week and that's it. And like, wow. then it'll go right back to normal. Okay. So now when you got your period, I mean, I know that you're, you know, always doing posing practice and things mm -hmm. like that. Are you monitoring through photos? like every day, like what look you like, okay, this is what this look, look looks like with water at this weight and like trying to kind of manipulate that. So then you know how to peak or maybe like you don't eat as much because you like this fullness with the water that's going on with the period. Like, have you tried? Not no, really. I okay. mean, it's like, it's one of those things I'm like, where, when I bloat, it all goes directly to my waistline, just directly to my waistline. Does it? So okay. like my, my glutes look the same, my legs look the same, my upper body looks the same. It's all in my waist, all of it. Okay. So well, at least it's controlled that way. <laughs> yeah. Right? Well, guess. the hard part about it is I can't hold my stomach in. Like that's the hard part. So yeah. You know, part of me is like, well, maybe if I just take like a, a diuretic and a, maybe a laxative, that would help me to just release everything from my midsection. You know. So if it gets to that point, because that's what happened to me last year in Dallas. I was on stage mm -hmm. and it was like it was because I got my I got my period that night after the show. And when I was on stage in Dallas, I couldn't hold it. I couldn't hold my stomach in. I couldn't understand why I couldn't hold my stomach in. Like I was having a hard time just holding it. And I was like, what is, I'm like, I don't have this problem. What is the problem? What is going on here? And that's what it was. And, you know, so when I was practicing this weekend, like, you know, Sunday was the, was the heavy day. So that's my first day. My first full day is the heaviest day. And when I was practicing on Sunday, it was like 
painful to the point of I, I can't like I can't even like I can't there's 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 just not going any, anywhere it's just gonna be here <laughs> you know what I mean so it's like I don't know so um you know it, it just it's it's part of part of life and stuff like that so you know if it gets to that point where I feel that if I start because I know what it feels like so I'm gonna communicate with Jamie obviously and if I start feeling that in like Hawaii or something I'm like listen I'm gonna take a diuretic I'm gonna take a laxative or something I don't know to get rid of this you know yeah um and I think that that will help uh, I don't want to do it now because if I do it now, it's going to screw everything up. Like as yeah, far as like, no, no, like no. even just for testing, because whenever I, I don't like taking laxatives, I don't like taking diuretics if I don't have to. And if I was to, to just to see what would happen, I would have a hard time going to the bathroom for like the next four days. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, It's not worth throwing your yeah. gut and everything else no. out of whack just to experiment with it, you know? No. So, and you know, maybe they'll be positive. Maybe you won't even need it. Who knows? Yeah. And that's what I'm what? hoping for. I'm hoping that, you know, like I said, it would be ideally, it would be ideal that it would hit on like Tuesday. If it would hit on Tuesday, then I'm not going to feel sailing. anything. Yeah. I'm Absolutely. Not gonna feel anything on Saturday. I and mean, I'm not going to feel anything in Japan either. I'll get through the travel day because my travel day is, is Sunday to Monday um, from Hawaii to Japan. So I'll get through the travel day and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. I mean, and what I've done in the past too, oh, I'll take it back. I did have my period once. This was Tampa Pro. Um, Oof. What year was it? 2014. Was it 2014? Yeah, it was 2014. Um, I got it on the flight to Tampa. That was on um, Thursday. I was going to say, so, it must have been a Thursday. Yeah, it was a Thursday. <laughs> it was a Thursday. So when I got there, I took my doll with diuretic, and that was all I needed as far as diuretics are concerned. That's all I needed. And I was that was I was super lean at that show. I actually did pretty decent at that show. Bikini was different back then. Um, I got second call out at that particular show, actually. So I was very happy about that. Great for Tampa Pro. <laughs> but I was really lean. It's great like, for Tampa really, Pro. Really lean. Yeah, it was that was a big the, what year I think India won it that year. I'm pretty sure India won it that late that year. So um, but yeah, I was very happy with it. Um, but anyway, so like I took the diuretic and I, I'm that person that when I take a diuretic, it, you know, as everybody knows, it just pulls water from everything. So it's not you just can't stay full, which back then it didn't really matter. It was just a skinny contest anyway. So <laughs> now it's fine. different now. It's different now. Why diuretics should be used in a very particular way. Yes. I do want to use that as a caveat, but Correct. yeah, you know, like right. you're using, you're only having it just in case you need it for yep. the water that's going to be right. added because of a menstrual cycle. Diuretics are not just used just because they, you know, are used all the time. They, they shouldn't be. That's right. Um, cause it, cause like I said, it doesn't pull water just from your stomach. It pulls water from everywhere. everywhere. So it's like there's just no controlling that. It just is what it is. And then you end up looking stringy and flat. Yeah. It's funny. I do some uh, console calls with like new clients all the time and I can like look up their stage photos and I'll be like, did you take a diuretic? And they're like, uh, but the, yeah. How'd you know? Mm -hmm. I can tell you, you're very, very flat, but I can also yep. see on your Instagram that you had muscle when the days leading up to the show. Yep. So yep. yeah, you know, you can screw it all up in a matter of 24 hours. Just, just you sure can. That. You sure can. And not following what your coach tells you or tracking water, sodium, all the things. So with your mm -hmm. current weight, how far off are you from last year's weight when you were on stage? Six pounds. Okay. Six pounds. So, okay. So hopefully a couple of that's muscle, obviously. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you're close. I'm close. So really close. Yeah. Um, when I look at my frame right now, I think it looks like from the front, I think I look like I'm ready. It's just the hamstring tie-ins. That's it. That's all. It's Welcome left. to the club, right? <laughs> yeah. It's a hamstring tie-ins. That's it. No, so, I mean, your shape is unreal. I don't know if you guys have been watching Sean's updates. I mean, your glute shape this year is insane. I you. love the purple. I think the thank purple you. is a really good mix up. I'm really excited for that. Yeah. I just, it's, it is, it's a completely different look. You definitely put on some good tissue in your off season this past it year. It is. It's, it's a, it, and that's why I, I try, I'm trying not to get too much into my head about the weight thing because I am completely different from what I looked like last year. So I just, you know, I, I, I've always needed to put size on. That's always been my critique, you know, and it's, it's either put size on or conditioning, which is basically the same thing for me. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? So yeah. it's yeah. like, I, I need that density. I need the fullness, I need that roundness. And I have that right now. So part of me is like, I just, I just don't want to lose that. 
Um, but I, I do need to come in a few more pounds down. I, I, I see it, you know, and I you know, I even said that to Jamie last year or last week when I checked in, I said, listen, I, you know, I know we're not trying to hit a goal like stage weight. I said, but where do you see me? Like, cause I checked in, I was 146.5 pounds or 0.6 pounds or whatever. When I checked in on Thursday, this morning I was 146 flat. So, okay. That's the um, half so pound. Drop. Yeah. That's the half pound. Um, so she said, I, you know, I think, you know, last year you, you were 140 when you came into your show, she goes, and you needed to be conditioned better. She's like, so I think we need to be 140 this year, just with the new body composition. Um, <clears throat> and I agree with that, you know, I agree yeah. with that. So, you know, that's goes, goes to the conditioning aspect. Like I have more size now, but I was not lean enough last year, but if I'd gotten lean enough last year, I wouldn't have had any shape last Correct. year, you know? So it's like a balancing act of, okay, you can keep cutting more, but if you keep cutting more, you're just going to end up skinny. That was me. Right. So right. it doesn't, doesn't help because I don't have the density and fullness and roundness to fill out that space. So this year I have that. So it's a matter of getting leaner and more conditioned and less body fat, but, can, but having that density and that roundness and that fullness of the muscle. So it's coming like, you know, I, I do little posing videos every morning and, you know, when I, when I'm completely flat, like have no water, no food, all that kind of stuff, I can kind of see the tie in come in, you know, but as soon as I have any water or anything like that, boom, <laughs> it's, it's gone. So, you know, it's one of those things. It's like, we're close, we're close, not there, but we're close. Um, so I, I'm just trying to keep my head above water. Here. I get it. <laughs> that's, that's where I am right now. And I'm not hurting. Like I've still got a ton of food. You know, my, my cardio is at 55 minutes, so it's not bad. Not bad. Yeah. Um, you know, my training is good. I even said to Jamie on, on uh, my check-in, I was like, cause I have, I have two glute days a week and I have one leg day a week. And, uh, last week I did three glute days instead of doing a leg day. And I said, I just did that just to see what would happen. I was like, and I felt like my glutes looked better. I was like, so I was like, should I be doing three glute days? And she's like, no, you still need legs. <laughs> I was like, I know. So <laughs> I was just like, well, what we can do. I was like, well, I just feel like my leg days just kind of blah. I was like, you know, uh, I just feel like it's short. It's a short day, all that kind of stuff. And uh, she's like, well, we can add uh, some glute exercises at the end of your leg day. I was like, okay. <laughs> so I'm just like, You're let's just add stuff. Let's just add right. stuff. <laughs> Like, for she's like, well, she's like, if you have some gas in the tank, we can add some glutes. I was like, okay, cool. Let's do it. <laughs> hey, if you got the energy for it, girl, you add it. You go for it. See, and, you know, again, I'm that person. I would rather burn the, the energy during my training than my cal than my than my cardio. So if I can burn absolutely more calories and stuff while I'm while I'm training, I'm I'm good. Like give me more, absolutely. and then we can cut the cardio back. I'm good. <laughs> I think that's like such a misconception too. Like in prep, is like people are like, oh, I'm prepping, so like I need to pull back on the intensity. And yes, you should be listening to your body. Like you know, and as food gets lower, yes, intensity and weight is going to drop. But the goal should be to try to maintain that logbook for as long as you can and it is oh, yeah. scientifically proven that you can burn more calories in a resistance training session than a cardio session and yep. for my girls that are really hammering their log book all the way to prep mm -hmm. those are the ones that are having the most success dropping keeping yep. cardio lower yep. keeping food higher but also keeping their fullness yep. you know Absolutely. they're not going flat they're they're not dropping muscle as much um, so I know it's hard and it's really hard to dig deep, especially like that four or three weeks out from stage where it's like, uh, but if you can continue to press, mm -hmm. you're going to be, put yourself in a lot better position to have higher food, lower amounts of cardio and savor that muscle tissue. And I haven't lost, like, I really haven't lost any strength at all. Um, that's you know, there's, awesome. There's, you know, there's certain days where you don't feel it, you know what I mean? But I, yeah, you know, in, in general, cool. like, cause you know, we got, we got our little app, so I make sure that I'm using the same weights or higher. I, tr I, I'm not dropping weight. Like I'm just not, um, that's awesome. And then I'm keeping the rep and of course the rep ranges and things like that too. I don't lift super heavy. That's the thing. I'm like, I'm more concentrated mind muscle connection, all that kind of stuff. I'm not a heavy lifter uh, when it comes to all those kinds of things. So you know, it's, it's not hard for me to maintain that. Right. And it's just more about the intensity and the, the mind muscle connection. So, That's it. Keeping the mind. Yeah. Some people just go and they swing stuff around or whatever. Okay. I'm done. No, no, no. I squeeze everything I do. 
So that way you're, again, you're keeping the intensity and you're keeping- I call that junk volume. Yeah. Just do it to do it. Just do it to do it. Yeah. Check or check box training. Yeah. I'm like, are you just going in the gym and doing your check box training today? Or are you going in with intention? Yep. Intention is huge. Absolutely. Huge, huge, huge. And I see it all the time. Like you said, like, I'm not a coach or anything like that, but I watch competitors when, when they're in the gym and I watch the ones that are still pushing and training with intensity and the ones that are not, that are the ones that are like this on their phone while they're, while they're doing their, their adductors. <laughs> if I see one of my athletes on their cell phone when they're training, I'm going to be like, what are you doing? <laughs> Sorry. Yep. That's like a mm-hmm. pet peeve of mine. Mm-hmm. That's why, like, I, I, I have the app as well with Dream, with Jamie, obviously, yeah. and then I'm a coach for Fit Body Fusion, so obviously I give my girls their training and trainer eyes, but I encourage them to put it into a written logbook. I have yeah. a logbook because I like to stay off my phone when I'm training because yeah. I get sucked into my check-ins and my girls texting, and if my phone's in my hand, I get sucked into it. So if I feel yep. like put it on D&D and put it away and I focus on my logbook, especially those three to four weeks out from show where yeah. literally everything hurts and I don't want to be there and I have to focus on literally one set at a time, mm-hmm. it's huge. It's yeah. huge. So I definitely encourage, I like pen and paper. I think it's very cathartic. I think you can write notes. I don't know. That's just like the type of person that I am. Some of my girls have seen that I do that uh, pen and paper and they're like, oh, well, I know you put it into the app, but can I try it? And they love it too. Yeah. So Hey, it's what works for you, right? But I love tracking weights in the notes because it keeps you self motivated, right? Like yeah. progressive overload. We yep. know each week you do the same workout. You try to incre- um, increase something from the last session, but it's more than that. It's a self motivator too. It's like a game with yourself that you can continue to play. That's right. If you're actually tracking. Yeah, and I do use the app for that reason because it's always sitting there. When you look at the app, you see the, the exercise see next to it. What you did last time, you know? Yeah. And it's I'm like, like oh, I'm never. I'm okay. never gonna- yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay at the same or I'm gonna go higher. I'm not gonna absolutely go up, period. So absolutely and I, I do use my phone during the during my workouts, but I turn off like notifications on the other apps and things like that just so that they're not and typically what I do too, like I'm, I'm that weird person that I play like YouTube videos and stuff while I'm training, like podcasts and things like that. Do you like to but, be visually stimulated when you're working? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I am I am too usually. Like yeah. I like something playing in the background, even if I'm not watching it. I yep. don't I don't know why it's same. Just, yeah. I always have something on for background noise, period. Just period. Yeah. But when I'm in the in the gym, that's what I do. Nine times out of ten, I'll have something playing on YouTube while I'm training. Okay. Um, same thing. I watch YouTube too while I'm doing cardio. Um as oh, yeah. or <laughs> cardio or theater. Yeah. Yeah. Um I my elliptical here at the house is in my office and I have Netflix, so I can watch Netflix when I'm here doing doing that here. But like if I'm at the gym or something like that, absolutely turn on podcasts and stuff on YouTube watch and listen. Um, even, even when I'm outside and doing cardio, I'll have, I'll have podcasts on. I don't turn, I, I rarely turn on music, which is, I'll do that sometimes. Like if I, if I feel like when I'll turn on music, when I'm training is when I need an extra boost, like from the beat to push. You me need like the, the beat, the push. Yeah. yeah. But typically I don't need that quite so much so that I have podcasts and YouTube videos, things like that playing while I'm training and okay. while I'm doing stuff. But again, if I'm having a rough day where I need a little bit of extra oomph, that's when I put the, the beat on for the music. <laughs> that's when the EDM comes out or the screamo. Right. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I need I need some more oomph. <laughs> so I don't know. I, I don't know how many people are like that, but that's just how I am. So typically what you're, if you were to pull my headphones out, you would hear a podcast or something going. That's what you hear. So, um, or like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm that person that constantly want to be learning. Like I'm trying again, I'm doing my own hair for, for Japan and for, for Hawaii. So I'm doing like, I'm testing different blowout methods and stuff. So I'll even have YouTube videos of like how to do blowouts going on in my, in my ears while I'm training. I mean, I'm, I'm constantly trying to like stimulate my brain while I'm stimulating my body. Learn, <laughs> multitask, <laughs> cognitive diversion, all yeah. of the things. Mm-hmm. I mean, your hair looks absolutely fabulous. I know you've been Thank practicing you. and do it. I love it. So healthy. I'm excited. Yeah, so I've been doing so the, the new method now, and I've done it the last couple of nights, is um, it's a it's a blow dry, the blow out first. I have one of those like um, those blow out what are they brushes. Called? The, br- it's the a brush. brush. It's, okay. a, it's a brush, but it's a, it's a blow dryer too. Okay. You know what I'm talking about? So it's an actual like saran. It's a, it's a, they got the metal b- brush part. Yeah. Too, yeah. It's yeah. A blow dryer too. Okay. So I use that for the blowout part of it. And then I have, um, silk, um, rollers. 
So I put the silk rollers in and sleep with them in overnight. So my I, my hair's hot when they go into the into the sleep roller or into the, the satin roller. And then when I wake up in the morning, all I have to do is undo the satin roller, take it out. And my hair is voluminous and lots of bounce and volume and stuff. Like this is after going to the gym and training and everything. And all I did was brush it. And like, it's still got some good volume and stuff. It still on. has like really pretty volume. Yeah. But like this morning, it was like, whoo, just like that. <laughs> can, you make, can you make that sound on stage too when you come out? Like, <laughs> I know, right? And it was perfect. Like, you know, it's it, when it comes out of the roller, it's a little bit too curly. But then I just go and brush it. And it's still got the volume. It's got the movement. It's got the bounce. It's got the shine. And I'm not doing a lot of heat damage to it or anything like that. Because all I'm doing is warming it up at night and putting it into the roller. And I sleep with the little bonnet on. And I've done that the last few nights. And it's worked out really nice in the morning. It looks so, good. Very shiny. I yes. know you, yeah, I know you posted yes. the, uh, the, the, shine, the shine us. spray. Yes, yes, yes exactly. I had a few of my girls DM me like, okay, I'm buying it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Everyone is messaging me too. What's that shine spray? I'm like, I don't know. Ask Sean. Like, <laughs> right? I'm like, I'm sorry. I should have had it. <laughs> No. I'm like, now I've got to edit it and put it into the... Into the I script. know. You had all the other right? things except for that. And that's the one that everyone wanted to see last week. I know. <laughs> it's so funny because like now, like that's always in my like IG feed and stuff like that too. Like whenever you click on something, then you see it for like ever in the end. I know. Like, it listens know? to us. Yeah. It listens oh, to us. 100%. I'm like, I'll be talking about something with one of my girlfriends I'm in the DMs and all of a sudden it starts popping up in the feed. I'm like, come on, bro. Like, is that seriously? weird? Yeah. Weird. Oh, mm -hmm. Yep. Weird. <laughs> like, oh, you're telling me a lot of things I already knew about myself. I didn't want to. I didn't want to repeat. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, I did talk about this product with someone. <laughs> Weird. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll sketch. We'll sketch. Or like it also, a little bit. You know, it tracks across other apps too. So if you're googling it or something, then it pops into your so into your social media feeds too. I'm like, bro, I didn't need people seeing. Lay off. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well maybe so, we'll talk about the olympia 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 and then all the olympia things will start coming up well seeing i was going to say i was like let's keep talking about the olympia because that's we're going into olympia week so um let's talk a little bit about the experience of the olympia itself because yeah how many have you gone to i i, I know you've gone as a as a as a competitor but also as a spectator so how many olympias have you actually gone to literally two once as a spectator oh okay once to compete so this oh, wow. will be my third Olympia that I'm going to attending. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. So you're, you're, you're a newbie, newbie. You know, yeah. Because I've never been to... in 2019. And at that point, the Olympia was still in September and I yeah. didn't get into it until November. So like it was done at that point. And then 2020 oh. was the first Olympia I ever watched. I don't know why I didn't go in 2021. I must, I must've just live streamed it. And then 2022, I was there and I attended or uh, competed in it. Wow. So you yeah. never even went to it when it was at the Orleans or anything like that in, in, in Vegas? No. So I've only been in uh, when I competed. It was in Vegas last yeah. year. Yeah. And then in yeah. 2020, it was in Orlando for COVID yeah. purposes. They had to move it. And then this year, it's back in Orlando. It's it's so funny, like kind of the way it's all working out for me, like in my timeline or whatever, that two of the three Olympias have been in my hometown. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so this will be only my third one. Wow. So I went for the first time in, I think it was 2010. I think it was the first time I went. And wow. That's I, like, crazy. The first time I went, I worked for beast sports supplements and I thought it was the coolest thing ever because their, um, their supplement booth was like right outside of the like VIP area for the, the prejudging stage in the expo hall. Oh, so cool. like I got to watch it right from the booth. I was like, this is cool. You were right there. <laughs> I yeah. Like, I didn't know what I was watching at that point. You know what I mean? Like I was so new in the sport and all that kind of stuff too. I didn't really understand what was happening. Um, but yeah, I've, I've been, God, I think I only missed like two since then. Um, so I've been every cool. year. Um, one of the cool things about when it was in Vegas was it was September, which was my birthday. So mm. I would always go and either come early or stay late um, and basically stay in Vegas for like a week uh, and do the Olympia. And like the one, the one year my girlfriend came out at the end of it and she st we stayed until like Wednesday. Sometimes Dan will come out and like, we'll stay till Wednesday or something and just celebrate the birthday and all that kind of thing too. So it just feels weird now that it's not like September and Vegas anymore. You know what I mean? Right. But I will say this, the experience as an athlete 
I think is a thousand times better in Orlando versus Vegas, just because of the ease of the comp competition and where the, the hotel is. And you, you, you walk across the sky bridge and you're there, you're in the expo hall, you know, that kind of thing. You don't have to go across the whole strip, you know? I totally agree with that. With, um, with when it was in Vegas in September, it wasn't terrible because it was still hot. So it was a cold to go outside and things like that. You know what I mean? But still, you were going from New Orleans, which is on one side across the strip on Vegas, all the way to the Expo Center, which is on the other side of Vegas and across the strip on the other side. So it would take you 20, 25 minutes just to go from the hotel to the Expo <laughs> Center every day. You know, and it's Correct. just like it's a pain. It was a pain in the ass. I mean, it, honestly, it was a pain in the ass. Um, the venue it's, and the, the hotel itself, in New Orleans, was subpar. <laughs> To say the least. <laughs> like, we'll just leave it at that. Um, it's like everything smells like smoke, you know, all that kind of yeah, stuff. It's, it's not, like one of those old not hotels. Like luxurious. No, yeah. it's not. It's not the Vegas that everybody knows now. It's the the scummy Vegas. <laughs> shitty part of Vegas. <laughs> yeah, right. So it was not luxury by any stretch of the imagination. Um, it's cheap. <laughs> it was cheap that's real why cheap. you did it yeah it was real cheap to stay there um but again it was just a pain in the butt like going back and forth and all that and i get that people like the whole experience of vegas and da 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 and you get to go party and all that kind of stuff maybe i'm just old but i don't care about any of that stuff anymore <laughs> i don't know if i ever really cared about it i mean i used to live in vegas so part of that too i'm kind of desensitized to all that i used to live out there i went so. there have ease for yeah. the show and yeah. then if i want to create chaos and craziness of going to this nightclub and then over here for this dinner and that's my that's my own you know fault yeah yeah but i agree with you i mean last year i mean prejudging what we were staying in a hotel prejudging was in a different hotel mm -hmm. finals was in a different hotel mm -hmm. then you have your different makeup and hair artists and they're trying to save money so mm -hmm. they're at different hotels the morning of the olympia i literally was at four different hotels within a couple of hours just trying to yes. get everything done and together it it is not ideal for the athlete Correct. at that point agreed so you know, I, I personally was happy I was coming back to Orlando for that aspect, but also the flight aspect. I mean, me being on the East Coast, it's a two hour, two hour flight, boom, we're done. It's direct, all that, you know, versus going all the way out to Vegas for that. Um, you know, we talked about this when we were talking about trying to do a little vacation. I was like, I just somewhere I don't have to fly to like that. You know what I mean? So personally, I like it better for that reason, too. Um, you know, the weather out there right now is nice, all that kind of stuff too. It's not too hot, not too cold, all that kind of thing. So I think it's great. So it's beautiful here today. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, what is the what is the temperature right now? Like it's what, 70s, 80s? Let's look. It's gotta be like high, <laughs> it's gotta be like high 80s. Like it is gorgeous out. I literally okay. was walking over here. I mean, my like my gym that I own is right across the street from my office. And I was walking over to the office. I was like, oh, I wish I could sit outside and do the podcast today. It's 85. Uh, damn. 85. 85 and like breezy like it is beautiful to, this uh, is here this time year in florida this is a beautiful yeah. time of year in florida it really is so yes it is it's comfortable yes you know yes um, it's not going to be too hot yeah of course we always have like a little bit of humidity and things like that but we're definitely out we had a really hot summer like texas summer yeah um it is i hope not going to be like that it's it's definitely cooling off here okay okay so for the year that you went as a spectator what did you buy tickets to? What did you go to? What did you go see? I went to Saturday night finals okay. and then we bought the um, pre-judging and we watched it in our hotel room and we had like a watch party with some okay. of our friends in the, in the morning time. And then we went to finals at night. Um, it's funny. Like I have never done like meet the Olympians myself, um, which happens on Thursday before the show. Um, I've never had athletes that I knew in the Friday pre-judging. Now yeah. I do. I know some yeah. bigger girls and some of the 212 guys and things like that. So now I'm more invested in the Friday sh yeah. um, show day as well. Um, so yeah, literally it was just Saturday night finals at the 2020 Olympia. And it was really, really packed, mm -hmm. like really packed. Mm -hmm. I remember I had just gotten breast augmentation a couple weeks before that. And I was sitting like this because that's how... And my boobs at the end of the <sighs> night were were hurting so bad. That's all I remember from it. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That's um, But, yeah, funny. just literally, like, it, like it's 
I was so new to this sport, like when I started that, like, I've just kind of, you know, just been kind of delving in here and there. So yeah. everything that I've learned or that I've been in attendance of is has been from my own like research and like, oh, maybe I'll do this. Like, you know, I didn't know at my first Olympia that there was like a VIP ticket and you could do like mm -hmm. all of these things. Yep. It's mm -hmm. crazy. It's crazy. So, the, and that's the thing. It's like, as you get into it more, like when I first started, I didn't, I didn't know what I was doing. You know what I mean? So like, <laughs> did, I, I, did any of us? <laughs> you know, I was like, I was like uh, most of the Olympias that I went to at the beginning was because I was working for a supplement company when I was there. Right. So, you know, it worked out nice. Like when I, you know, when it was prejudging for bikini or something, they would let me go watch it. So I had my little vendor pass. I could walk in, no big deal, whatever, you know, and I was good. Um, so what I do now um, is they have the, uh, the insider club now. Um, and the Olympia people actually helped hook me up with that. So I'm very happy and very grateful for that. But this is something you can actually purchase as a fan. Um, and what that is, is it gives you VIP entry to all of the expo stuff. So it gives you the seating area. I'm doing pre-judging, uh, gives you an early entry to, um, the meet the Olympians, things like that. When they do, I don't know if they're doing the gala this year. Are they doing the gala this year? Uh, yeah, we were, we were told they're doing the gala. Okay. All right. After oh, you show. know what? I think the gala is just for you VIPs this year, I think. Um, anyway, it, they, it will give you entry to that, things like that. So, um, so anyway, so it gives you all the, all the, those things. And the only thing it doesn't give you is the tickets for Friday and Saturday night. Right. So okay. depending on what you wanted to do, some nights, some, some years I would go, sometimes I wouldn't, um, 2020 I did go because actually Jasmine, one of my girls was in the finals. So I wanted to go, um, last year I went to Friday finals because I had a fitness girl. So she was in that. Um, and then it was wellness and all that kind of stuff too. So I wanted to see it anyway. I didn't go to Saturday last year. Um, I went to Saturday in 2020 because of, again, because of Jasmine. So just, just depending on the year, right? This year, um, I'm not going to finals on Friday because I don't have anybody in it uh, or prejudging for men, that kind of thing. So I'm not going to Friday, the Friday night. Saturday, we'll see. I don't have tickets currently. They always pop up. So, you know, what's I, funny is I do have an extra ticket. Oh, do you? Really? If I happen to make it to the night show, you can go sit with Drew if you'd like. Okay. All right. Perfect. Awesome. Well, that's, right, that got, that's right. You get them because. Okay. Perfect. Yep. Um, yep. Cause, yeah. Because, yeah, I was like, you know, for me, again, this Olympia is going to be a little different for me because I'm in prep and I'm two weeks out. So I'm like, I have to choose my spaces wisely as far as what I go to and what I don't. Absolutely. Um, so like last year, you know, again, I didn't have anybody inside Saturday finals, but I had a bunch of my girls that were there in Vegas. So we all got the live stream, went into one of the girls' hotel rooms and had a big watch party. And it was is so that much fun. fun. That's we what I'm telling so my girls so to much do. Fun. Yeah, like you're there, you're in the, yes. you're in the mix of it, but then you get to be in your own hotel room. Yeah, I don't know. That's what we did that one year, and it was fun. It was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that. I've done that before. We did that a few years back in in Vegas, where we did a little watch party in my hotel room and stuff like that. So it was a lot of fun. Um, so depending on what happens this year, I'll figure out Saturday night. I may not do any of that. I I do have a bunch of girls, and we're talking about potentially doing another watch party, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, if you make it to finals, then I'll take your seat. Perfect. <laughs> um, it's yours. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. Um, and then, um, and then we'll just see what happens. You know, like I said, like if, if, if Yulia makes it to finals, I'm going to try and get a ticket too. you know what I mean? That kind of thing too. So, um, and if not, then I'll just watch the live stream and then I won't expend the energy that I probably shouldn't be expending anyway. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Uh, you that's know, a, that's pick, what you have to think about battles. too. You're only going to be two, two and a half weeks at that point. So you're going to be really low on energy. You got to protect your mental space. You have to yes. protect you being around people and your immunity system. And for yeah. me, what's most important for me to see every year is prejudging. You know, at finals, especially when we're talking about we're talking about the female divisions of finals. They don't do anything. You know, they just come out, they do their little routine, they head out awards and they go, you know what I mean? Yeah. And to yeah. be perfectly honest with you, if you're a fan of the sport at finals and you really want to watch what's going on, unless you're in those first few front row seats, you're not seeing much. Nope. So yeah. you're looking at the screen. screen. You're looking at the screens. <laughs> so, you know, part of me is like, why am I going to spend hundreds of dollars on these tickets for people that I see literally every weekend? <laughs> right. <laughs> when I can right. just get the live stream. No, I think you're approaching it right. More, and probably see more just from the live stream itself. 
So, you know, I'll see, I'll see how it goes on Saturday night. And um, like I said, depending on, um, depending on who ends up going to finals and all of that too, you know, that'll, that'll make a big difference in my decisions too. Um, and at the end of the day, it'll be fun regardless of what we do. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, because <laughs> yeah. I still got to get my training in. I still got to get my cardio in. I still got to go check in with Jamie. I still got to get my food in, you know, all that stuff. That's important. So I'm going to do, you know, my Spotify covers like I always do for, for, um, for prejudging. So prejudging is really important that I'm at that. But other than that, from that point on, it's like, okay, now I got to make smart choices. Right. So, yeah. you know, if you're a fan of the sport and you're going for your, you know, whatever, for your first time, whatever, think about those things, like as far as what you really want to be there for. And then like, what are you looking to actually get to see and then purchase your tickets and attend events accordingly? You know what I mean? I um, agree. Do you think that for someone who's trying to decide whether they want to spend the money on finals or like, should, should they just go to the expo? I feel like I would advise go to the expo. That way you see every single person it's cheaper. Yeah. Yep. And then just like you said, Sean, like if there's someone that that person really wants to see that made it to the top 10, a pro that they love or whatever, and there's going to be a Saturday night ticket that someone yes. is selling, whether, yes. you know, a loved one bought one to see their person that didn't make it. There's going to yep. be last minute tickets for sale. So if you really want to go, don't freak out. The, yep. Just watch social media. They'll be up there. Yep, absolutely. And I do the same thing at the Arnold, too. Um, you know, I wait until till I get there and I, I, I go and I buy all my expo ticket stuff ahead of time. And then I wait till I get there for everything else. Yeah, you know. So, I think that's the smartest thing. And if you're yep. considering that and you're like not sure what to buy, that's what I would do. Buy the yep. expo ticket, go to the pre-judging, and then just kind of see how the day goes. You yes. you might even be exhausted and want to do a watch party in the hotel room. I'm telling you, those watch parties are a lot of fun. They and are. And when the Olympia's over, everybody's back at the hotel hanging out. That's right. You still feel like you're in the mix of things. Everyone Absolutely. really starts hanging out on Sunday. Like yes. that's where everyone is really like fed and happy. And then mm -hmm. you're seeing the athletes walking around and they actually like want to talk to people because now that yep. they're, you know, not focused on the show. So that's really when like kind of the fun starts happening. That's right. Really. No, I completely agree with that. <laughs> too it's like you know at the end of the day it's like when you're in this i i feel like when you're really like in the sport like as a athlete or a coach or whatever you probably view it a little differently than fans do you know what i mean like again for me it's like why am i gonna spend hundreds of dollars on these tickets for people that i literally see every weekend like that's what i think of i'm like right. and like i said for me i'm gonna sit there in the nosebleed seats and not be able to see anything anyway so what's the point like i want to be able to actually be up there so I can see what's going on. Like otherwise, this is, this is one of those sports where you need to be close. <laughs> yeah, and you're you know? watching it on a screen, watching yeah. a live stream screen in your pajamas and the comfort yeah. of your own hotel room. Right. Well, that's what we did last year. You know, we got it. We got the live stream. We got um, Uber Eats came and delivered, and like we just had a great time. We drank and had a good. Time. I'm not gonna be able to do that perfect. this year, but you know, whatever. Perfect. Like, <laughs> it, was, it was perfect. It was so much fun. We still got dressed up. Yeah, you know, we still acted like we were going. Um, you know, then, we're, then we just went out and went to the bar afterwards, you know, afterward. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think that's the way to approach it, you know, and you have to think too, guys, like when you're, you know, Thursday, meet the Olympians and things like that. For some of those Olympians, they compete the very next day. Like I remember Raya, who's a figure athlete on our team, a coach for Fit Body Fusion. She was at meet the Olympians till 10 o'clock that night, meeting all of her friends. And she had to wake up at four o'clock the next morning to for her makeup and to compete. So you guys just have to realize too, like for the majority of us, like this is our job, right? right. Like the Olympia is the place to be all year. We've all worked really, really hard to get here. So in the days leading up to the Olympia, we might be a little cranky or hungry or short, but because we're on a mission, this is like, we, yep. we have a job to do, you know? Yep. So Saturday night and Sunday is when everyone can just and relax right. and have some fun and things yeah. like that. So just keep that in mind when you're when you're hugging your Olympians and when you're getting there early and things like that, that everybody's a little bit cranky and a little bit, you know, hungry and, yep. you know, focusing on the mission. But once the mission's over, everyone has a lot more fun and, and let, yeah. let's loose. So if you can stay through Sunday, Monday, yep. that's also a lot of fun. So you could stay happening and things like that. And I think there's the press conference, too, on Sunday. Uh, there is, the yeah. Olympia. Yeah, the press conference is on Sunday morning or something at like 10, 11, something like that in the morning. Um, yeah. I typically do go to that. Um, I don't know if I'm going to go this year or not. Depend Again, just depends on my our schedule and what we're going to do or what we're going to do our podcast, you know, all that kind of stuff. I fly out in the afternoon 
evening ish. Something okay. Like that. So I got plenty of time, but again, it's a matter of, you know, when am I going to go do my cardio? When am I going to all that shit? So, you know, <laughs> sitting it all in. <laughs> yeah. And sleep somewhere in there. I got to get my sleep too. Cause that's super important. So, you know, um, minor yeah, details, minor things. minor things. I know. Like, and that's the thing too. It's like, you got to think about these things too. Like, I don't know who is going to the Olympia this year that's in prep, but I do have a few girls that are, that are going, that are in prep. And it's like, you got, you got to remember, like the world doesn't stop turning. <laughs> You've got, you still got to get all that stuff in, you know, yeah. you still, still got to get all that stuff in. So, um, but you're going to leave feeling so fulfilled and motivated. Yeah. It's yep. I've, I've been in, the, I've been there in 2020 when I was on prep and it, you know, it's hard, you know, yeah. but it, you leave just feeling so energized yes. and, you know, you're seeing the new picks, the new standards going yep. into the 2024 season. So you, you, you see exactly what you need to work on for your division. And, you know, Tyler, I think has done a really excellent job at really stepping up and making those videos of mm -hmm. what they're looking to see to at the Olympia and going into next year. And I think that this, this Olympia, I'm hopeful that we're going to make some changes and we're going to yeah. really nail down some, some things in all of our divisions on what we need to be looking for as athletes. Yeah. Um, so I think this Olympia is going to be big. You know, I think bikini is obviously going to be very, very exciting. Um, I uh, want to say, I think that all of the divisions yeah. are going to be really, really exciting. There's a lot of mix ups and changes mm -hmm. and dropouts. Unfortunately, I don't know if you guys have noticed, there's a lot of, um, athletes Jesus. from overseas that aren't able to get in right now. I feel terrible for them and they're trying to figure it out, but there's, there's a lot of things happening right yep. now. Um, so I think, I think it's going to be very interesting. I think there's going to be a lot of shockers, a, a, a lot of interesting topics and things that we we're going to be able to discuss, obviously the, yeah. the uh, Sunday after, but <laughs> it's going to be a good one. And I know we say that every year, but really, truly, you know, the back office at the MPC IFBB, I really do think that they're trying to kind of, really nail our standards down. And this is the Olympia where they're going to have to make those tough calls in order to follow what they're trying to do. So this is going to be huge for us in our sport. Yeah, I agree with that. And I think that also we start seeing different rule changes come out this time of year. Yes. Like, we, like they just had the, the announcement about the top, only the top three in the open men are going to qualify now for, um, for Olympia next year, which if those of you that don't know, last year was top five. So top five in the open men, every other category was top three. Top, but open men, it was top five qualified for the next year's Olympia. So they just changed that personally. And I put this in my stories personally. I think that it should just be the winner. I really do. I think it should just be the winner that qual that requalifies and, you know, previous Olympia winners pre uh, requalify. Um, everybody else should have to compete. I think everybody else should have to compete. Um, I also, and I put this out there too, and I've said this several times, I think they should bring the point system back. Um, I, I didn't like when they did, when they eliminated it because it just takes away that carrot um, when people go into a show, they just want to know they have a shot at something else. And sometimes you go into a show, let's take the open men, for example, and say you're going into a show and you know, like, you know, Nick Walker, you know, Nick Walker's competing. <laughs> and I, well, shit, why, you don't why am I going to compete? Yeah. Why am I going to compete? Like, I know I'm not going to be in, you know what I mean? So yeah. what's the point? So when you have the point system, it gives you the opportunity to think, okay, well, at least I'm accumulating points as I go through the year. And I could potentially qualify on points. That gives you something. gives you gives you a carrot to reach for. Gives you something to go after, other than just a win. Um, so I do think that taking the point system out was a mistake. I think putting it back in would be um, would help throughout the year in creating more hype and creating more competitors in general. Um, <clears throat> you know, a good example of that is I think that this year we had what? How many how many girls are qualified for Olympia this year? Is it? I want to say it was 57 or 58. So really it only eliminated about 10 from last year because we were at 67 or 68 last year. Yeah. So that the point that of wasn't, eliminating that wasn't the even, points. That wasn't even on points though. That that was some of the shows were gone. Right. Well, it was the the timeline, right? And that's yeah. why they keep trying to slowly yes. bring the Olympia back up to the earlier Correct. in the year. I agree with you. I like the point system. Why they eliminated it was to get rid of the three athletes that would qualify on points. Well, maybe you still do a point system, but the winner of the points does the point yeah. system. Yeah. I think for the men's bodybuilding, they did the top five because A, they don't have as many shows in the year. Mm -hmm. And B, for the men's bodybuilders, it is just a lot tougher on them to do yep. show after show after show with how large they are, supplements, yep. food, and things like that. So they try to make it easier for them. 
but I agree with you. You know, I think it should be definitely the winner of the Olympia. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I liked the point system too. I think that they could have manipulated the point system a little bit better, but really did removing it really do much. No, no. No. Um, so that's where I think to the IFBB is getting, trying to crack down on how many shows have IFBB bikinis. So there's not as many chances and opportunities and things like that. It makes it a little bit more hardier and, and, you know, structure. I have an issue with that too, because there's more competitors. So yes. there's more competitors in the bikini, bikini division. So there should be more shows, you know, this Correct. is like back to the, to the men's <laughs> open. Like there's, there's less shows. And the reason why le- there's less shows, the sanction fees are higher, the prize money is higher, all of that stuff. So it takes more for a promoter to actually put on a men's open b- bodybuilding show. So at the top level, you got to think, okay, well, let's make them compete more to qualify. They have sure. to, so that the promoters on this level can actually have competitors in their show and make some money. You know what Definitely. I mean? Like Definitely. That's- that's, that's, that's where it comes down, what it comes down to. And, you know, when we look at the, the bikini division and I've heard a few other um, people and podcasts and stuff say that for bikini, you should have to win two shows in order to go to the Olympia. It's like, no, no, no. Like, do you realize that when you're saying stuff like that, you're essentially just putting the point system back into place is what you're doing. Yeah. And, <laughs> and you know, let, we're like, I would we like should have tears. Ask, like, we should like have tears of shows. How yeah. easy they think it is just to win a pro yeah. show. Like, it's like, not. We should have tears where, where if, there's, if it's a tier one show, then you have to win one. If there's a tier two show, then you have to win two. If it's a tier I'm like, that's the point system. <laughs> and it's, and, and the really point the system. point, right. And at that point, the points is the simplest. But just like you said, it does keep someone motivated just to yes. keep showing up. Correct. You know, and, it, and then that in turn helps the promoters. And then that's that right. in turn helps prize pools. Yep. And yes, it is a trickle down effect. And I don't think that we found the perfect recipe yet. Mm-hmm. However, I do think that they're taking note. And they're seeing yeah. this and right. hopefully just continues to improve and get better. We'll see. But right. I, I said in the in last uh, week's uh, check in <laughs> last week's podcast that, you know, they're making all the changes right now to the men's divisions. I think women is going to be next. Yes. Okay. So we're, yes. we're just going to have to see the way that 2024 shakes out and, you know, what they continue to kind of change and manipulate. I think they're trying to solidify all the men's stuff. And yep. then they're going to work on us. So well, I agree. I 100% agree. And just to go back on the point system too, I've talked about this before. I don't think there should be tears either because just because the show is has been around for forever, like a New York pro or a Tampa pro or something like that, that doesn't mean it's more difficult. You know, yeah. the quality of the competitors that shows up could be subpar. You know, we've seen that happen before where you go into a show like that and there's really nobody that shows up that's, that's, a, that's a top level, top tier quality quality athlete you know right it just any show could be competitive it depends on who shows up then we look at hurricane that you just competed in and there's five olympians in it right right yeah so that would be considered to be a more difficult show yeah when in reality it's a relatively new show when you're looking at tampa new york pittsburgh all those kinds of things right and tampa this year was kind of like meh which is usually like oh my gosh tampa right that's right but there was no that's athletes right. that did that show for whatever reason. But yep, that's absolutely right. You know, you look at the at the the list in Tampa, and the only previous Olympian was Ashlyn. Right. That was it. And me. But oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need. We're, we're, we're talking. About, I, I'm just joking. We're talking about top ten Olympians. <laughs> no, but when, when the list came out, I was like, oh yeah, yeah. of course. Like you, we, you can pick for, when you can easily pick from the list, like wait, who you think the winner is going to be? Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, so I, yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think there should be tears. I just think it should be points across the board. I just think you know it is what it is, and that's and that's how that works. You know, um, and a I've lot of people before. want the points back. Yeah. I rarely talk to someone and they're like, "Oh, good riddance with the points gone." Yeah. Most of the time, I hear from people, "I want the points back." Correct. I agree. Same thing. Everybody and like when I put that up in my stories, I had a bunch of people DM me like, "Oh, I totally agree. I'm totally on board with that." You know, and it's just like. It, Again, it gives you something to shoot for. It gives you a yeah. carrot. It gives you something to reach for. It's like, oh, I could potentially win this. You know what I mean? Correct. It keeps things exciting. It's you know, a it different it, excitement. Yes, Absolutely. It keeps things Absolutely. exciting all the way up until the final show. You know, like I, I had, this was back in 2020. I had a girl that qualified for the Olympia on points in her last 
show. Everything, there was like three shows going on that weekend and every, every placing had to fall just perfectly in order for her to actually qualify. And she ended up, she had to place top five. She had to get at least fifth or she wasn't going to qualify. And then the other shows going on, there were certain people that had to not place in order for her to qualify. And it all just lined up the very last moment she got fifth place and boom, she was qualified. And that's exciting. It yes. was like, is she going to do it? Is she not? And that's how last year before I won, um, Charleston, Jody and I were in the points race. Yes, so it was like her right. and I, her and I, her and I. Yep. Um, and then Jody ended up making it on points last year. Yep. She was top of the points. It's funny she was at the top of the points and she was done competing. And then all these other girls that were on the list, they started competing. Yeah. Jody had to come back out That's early right. or earlier than the Olympia because we weren't sure. We were nervous. Right. She yep. ended up having plenty of points, but still, it was exciting because she was like, oh, shit. "Like I don't know if I'm gonna make it." Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So we ended up throwing her into a couple shows, and she made it on points. But again, it was she. Yep. It was exciting. It was the thrill of it, and she Absolutely. earned it and literally fought her way there and yep. that is something that she should be so proud of you know yeah. and she you know if you're if it unfortunately can't win the show then that's the next best thing yes. and that's what keeps you motivated and showing up plus gives you really good momentum going into the olympia that way too if you are going on points right like Clearly, you have done well enough to make it to those top three points. Getting 36 points or whatever that Jody had last year is no small yeah. feat. Yeah. Like, that that's a lot of shows and a lot of top five placings. Like, yep. that is huge. Yep. So those girls should be awarded. And just like you said, have that carrot just as much. Yep. And like, and again, it keeps us as fans engaged too. Yeah. We're like trying it was to figure super it out. Exciting. Like, how, like, how is it going to play out? How's this going to work? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, are they going to make it? Blah, blah, blah. You know, what, who was another one last year? Lana, Lana, uh, Lana, she, she's she the one that came the out very like, last. late and we were like, oh shit, she's coming back out. Like, blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. And then she ended up making it in. The very last show she qualified. If she hadn't yep. done that last show, she wouldn't have qualified. So it's like, it, it keeps, again, it keeps people really engaged and like, you know, we're sitting here getting all hyped about it. And this was last year. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, it, like at, again, as a fan, it makes it interesting. It makes it fun, you know? So that's my two cents. I think they should bring that back. Um, and again, I'm okay with just the, just the winners qualifying because it makes everybody come out and compete again. You know, it's not like the top five aren't going to qualify. You know, you look at the top five from bikini this year um, and, you know, Jennifer would have been forced to compete again because she didn't win anything. Um, Maureen would have qualified, obviously. Uh, Laura Lee, she came out, won the Arnold. So she qualified she already. Qualified. Mm -hmm. uh, Ashley won a bunch of shows. She qualified already. You know, you look at the top five, they're all going to qualify anyway by coming out and competing again. But again, it keeps it interesting because you got those top names coming out and competing again at shows, which is cool. It's fun. People like seeing that. People like seeing those top pros out there competing, you know, and it's not like they have to do a ton. They can do one or two shows, but it keeps people engaged. You know, yes. we look at, you know, we look at people that were in the top five this past year in any of the divisions, wellness, all of them, hardly any of them competed. Sydney Gillen didn't compete at all. Francioli didn't compete at all, you know, not at all. Isa yeah. didn't, didn't compete and at I all. I would have loved to see some of them on stage yeah. before Olympia. Again, but yeah. that's the exciting part. It's like, oh, we get a little sneak peek and, oh, she's just going to get better. And that's right. That's yeah, right. they didn't have to. Nope. And then people forget about you, too. It's like real quick, people are like, oh, yeah, I forgot she was even in the top five. You yep. know, something you got to consider as a pro is momentum and um, people talking about you. And, yep. you know, the more shows you're in, your name's out there, your name's in the mix. Even if yep. they didn't even win the show, you came in third or second to a really tough competitor. Yep. That's, that's resume. It's building that's your right. resume and things you got to think about as a pro. That's right. You know, you look at, at, at people that are coming up now, like I, I was doing this as I was trying to review stuff to do some previews and stuff for the Olympia going into, you know, top 10 placings, things like that. We don't have anybody this year that, that came out and just freaking crushed it. We don't have anybody other than I would say in, in bikini, I would say Amy, Amy's the only one. Five that wins. Has, yes. That has multiple wins. When we talk about that, you know what I mean? You have yes. two. Yep. Ashlyn has two. Um, yep. Who else has two? Maybe Ashley Kay. Ashley, you know, she always competes though. That's like normal for her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like um, normal. Isa, no. No. Isa's going on. Yeah, that's it. Uh, it's a small list. Very small yeah. list. <laughs> it's like nobody came out or freaking crushed it this year. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, and that's funny because people were, you know, talking about Amy, like, well, why'd she do legions? Well, number one, her feedback was to do legions at Road to the Olympia. So, yeah. of course, you're going to go do legions if that's your yeah. feedback. But number two, she wanted to get out there and get her name back in the mix. She had a little bit of an off season after the early, the four wins earlier this year. Yeah. She wanted to get her name back out there. That's smart. That's Absolutely. management of your athlete, of yourself. That's somebody that's hungry. Yes. And that's just want to improve, hungry. get that feedback. You know, the more time that we're on stage, the better for us in terms of getting feedback, knowing what we need to do to get better, especially this close to the Olympia. Yeah. Oh, I just thought of um, Val, Valeria from Ukraine. She's got more uh, than one. She's yes. Got more than one. But that's just because she's competed the last two weekends. Right. If she had if she had competed the last two weekends, she'd only have one. Right. Um, what about what about Evie? Evie Askandar. Has she won more than one this year? She's got to have. She's she's one that that competes quite a bit. Yeah. But if she, she has she didn't she didn't compete while, as much though as she did last year. Yeah. So she competed at the beginning of the year. Yes. Yeah. A lot of people came out at the beginning of the year and then took yep. the time off for the Olympia. Yep. Where I was still building the first half mm -hmm. of the year, did like the middle part, and then now we're here. So it's interesting. It's really interesting to see too how the pros kind of structure their season, right? Yeah. Like how they go into the off season, what shows they pick, things like that. That's something to keep in mind when you're watching your favorite pros. And like mm -hmm. if you're an amateur trying to turn pro, kind of watch how the pros manage themselves and their schedule yes. and um you know, picking, p picking certain shows around the Olympia and things like that, because there is a rhyme or a reason mm -hmm. for most mm -hmm. there's, there's thought and emphasis behind it. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and, and I, you know, I'm that person that I'm like, I'm all about like finding what your strategy is, right. Yeah. There's never a surefire bet. Like there's no sure, surefire bet that comes out and says, if you win five pro shows, you're going to come in and win the Olympia. That doesn't, that doesn't absolutely work like that. not. It doesn't no. Work like Cause every no. show is different. The way you look each day is different. The judging panels are different. The people you're sitting next to are different. So you can't calculate that. You know what I no. mean? But there is a way to play the game with strategy, you know, and it's still playing a game. It's not a surefire win, but it's playing a game. You know, and understanding that when you do certain things, they're gonna that's gonna boost you or that's gonna drop you, right? Absolutely. Yep. Oh, Eureka, Eureka, Eureka one too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're See? like, I'm, thinking, I'm, like I'm thinking, I'm like, hold on, I got another one. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, should we pull a list up right now? No, I don't, know. I don't want to. Which I want again. I want to shout. I want to shout her out because she's been helping me out with the Japan Pro and getting ready for that and what I can travel with and what I can't and all that kind of stuff. She's, she's doing the so show too. Great. She's so, so sweet. Yeah, so I'm, I'm I'm thankful for that because I'm like, can I take my food? How does this work? I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> you need all the help you can get for that one. So she's been really so excited like, for I was, you. Though. I was going through Jamie. I was like, Jamie, can you ask Eureka this? I was like, this is stupid. Why would I just ask Eureka myself? Let's <laughs> call Eureka. She's such a sweetheart. She's gonna yep. tell you all the snacks to get in Japan. I, I love it. when when I, when I see Eureka in person. She's always got like she opens up her bag and she just has all the snacks from like overseas and they're different. And she's like, have have five, have multiple. I'm like, girl, I'm in I'm in season it. right now. I love it. I know, right? I'm like, I'm I'm already thinking in the back of my head. I gotta pack light because I'm gonna have to bring stuff back. You know what I mean? <laughs> Pack an empty duffel and then yes. you can fill the duffel. I'm absolutely doing that. I am yep. absolutely doing that. 100 percent doing that. Yep. I always I already, have an empty duffel in my in my bag. And then if I need it, and then I have it. <laughs> yeah, which I have to open up now because uh Liquid Sunray sent me, Marilyn, she sent me a, a blow up tent for um spray oh, cool. inside of. So I have that. I have to open it. I haven't even opened the box yet and see how big it gets because it actually blows up. So I, I, I got to see if I can pack it or I told I was like, if it's not if it's big, I said, I'm going to just send it back to you because I was like, I need the space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. She sent me yesterday. I can't wait. My uh, pre tanning kit for the Olympia. Oh, yeah. With, like yeah, my yeah. charcoal scrub and oh, things like that. Stuff. Oh, gosh, I so love that charcoal good. scrub. The charcoal yeah. scrub is life, you guys. Like I've said, this literally, it, it is my really favorite is. product. Ever. I use thing. it all year long. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> Plug for anyway. LSR. Sorry. I know, I know, right? <laughs> it's just so great. <laughs> all their products are though. Cause they do all that, uh, all that stuff, um, organic and all that kind of stuff too. You know what I mean? So it's, it's just really good for you regardless. So, good. so they, they put so a lot good. of time and effort and care into their, in their products. So Marilyn mm -hmm. is like literally she's just amazing like yes yeah. cares about every single person yes. as a person which means that she cares about our like, skin 
I'm sitting there texting her about the like needing a blow up tent or needing a tent, a tanning tent. She's like, I'll just send you mine. <laughs> like, who does that? Like, yeah. <laughs> she's like, yeah. you can have mine. I don't ever use it. You can have it. I was like, someone who cares. Okay. <laughs> I know, right? I was like, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate thank it, you, Mama. Thank I you, know, Mama. Right? I was like, worst case scenario, I said, if it doesn't work, I'll just send it back to you. And, and it is what it is. So she sent me that. She sent me some more um, competition bronzer. So I have more just in case I run out. And then uh, she sent me this product to test for taking the tan off. She's like, I really want your uh, your feedback on this. Cause cool. Like, yeah, gonna be that is something that they're year. missing from their line. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering if she was going to do that. Awesome. Yeah. So they, they cool. had the, uh, I don't know if they still have it, the Erase It. And it worked okay. Yep. But um, I guess this is the new that they're formulating. And she's like, yeah, I really want your feedback because we're going to launch it next year. And I was like, okay, yes. I can do that. Because, you know, obviously going from Hawaii to Japan within a week, got to take the tan off. You're in a scrub, 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 mm -hmm. scrub. Yep. Yep. So <sighs> I'm like, all that skincare stuff. And I'm like, meanwhile, I'm watching my face. I'm like, I'm going to get my Botox touched up on Friday. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm getting like you know, the, diet, the diet face. I'm like, oh, my God, look at that. Ah. <laughs> I feel face. that. Oh, I man. feel that. And the tan, all of it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I <laughs> love Oompa it. Loompa, baby. Oompa it. Loompa. Uh, <laughs> oh, juice. my goodness gracious. Oh, the things that we do to ourselves, man. Like, sometimes I think about it and I'm like, man, we, we really put ourselves through a lot for this sport. This sport is so weird. <laughs> It really between is. Between our body, water, tan. Oh, man. All the things. I think, I think you have to be a little bit crazy to be in this sport. I think you do. Uh, I think yeah. You and it's crazy. funny because going back to the start of the podcast, yeah, you have to be some sort of type A, yeah. good with to-do lists. Like, yeah. that's the only way you really thrive in our yep. sport you have to be on task absolutely but like yes I'm you have here, to have I'm a like, level of craziness I'm like i need to drink two more of these i'm like i need to get this water down i need to get on the water i know i'm like oh I'm, I'm i'm behind today i'm behind on my water i need two more of these oh man all right i got a massage in 10 minutes oh good for you i had mine yesterday yeah. I had one yesterday too. That's how beat up I am. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm yeah. sore today from yesterday. When I got done with cardio, I, um, I stretched and stuff last night after I did the massage, I did cardio and then I stretched. I was like, oh my God, I'm still so freaking sore last night. So today and wait till you have your show day on Sunday and you feel like you ran a marathon. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. Yeah. Oh, and I then, know. Yeah. And then, and then I got, a, and then I got, I was like, then I got to fly to, to Japan for nine hours. Freaking awesome. <laughs> Wonder if you could find a bodywork person out there that you could I'm see, I'm sure, like I'm at sure. your hotel or something. You know, I do that. I'm sure I can do it in Japan too. But, but I do that when I when I've traveled for shows like that. Like every time I go to a show, because I go early, so I'll get it like a like I'll get some sort of massage or lymphatic massage or something. Anytime that I go, like I've done back to back shows where like I've stayed in California for a week and I'll go find somebody to give me a massage during that massage during that week, their uh, physical therapist or whatever. But I, I do that every time. Yeah. I find yeah, somebody. I mean, so I'm sure that's... there's somebody in Japan that would do a really good job. I'm sure. Eureka. <laughs> I know, right? Where are you at? <laughs> I, I need a recommendation. <laughs> I know, right? I need to hit somebody up. It's Tokyo. I'm sure I can find somebody in Tokyo. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> Let's start thinking about that now. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I absolutely will be doing that. hundred percent. hundred percent. Anyway, <laughs> with that, we are going into Olympia hype week. Um, you still have time to do one next week too. One of these before. Okay, cool. I definitely do. So I just want to make sure yeah. that, you, that you do, because I know it's your peak week and stuff too. So, um, so we'll do one going into, um, Olympia. I'll be flying out on Thursday. So I'll be there Thursday morning. And then we will wrap up the Olympia on Sunday from there. So that'll be fun times. Awesome. Um, it'll be good. Like looking good forward times. to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So thank you guys again for joining us. And if you haven't already subscribe, as always, subscribe, um, like, comment, send us your questions to you. Yes, this is episode nine. Um, and then we will be on episode 10 for Olympia week. That's oh so my cool. Goodness. Yay. That is well, so go, cool. Yeah, go enjoy your uh enjoy your massage and we'll be back here again next week. Thanks guys. Bye guys.